Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see everybody uh, back here this evening. Again, if we have any special, if we have any guests, we'd like to uh, welcome our guests. Uh, if you are visiting, please fill out the attendance card in the back of the queue and then leave it in the queue as you leave. Also, please ensure that your cell phones are on the up or silent. Thank you. And if you have a need uh, for a nursery or training room, they are located to your left as you exit the auditorium. Please keep these members and loved ones in our prayers. Uh, Barbara Hugar, she received a halter monitor on Friday in the monitor uh, to monitor her heart rate. Also, uh, Brother Tim, uh, friends Joe, uh, who's in Saudi Arabia, is recovering from open heart surgery. Uh, Word that we got on him was that uh, he was good. He's just got tubes out of him and uh, he's recovering well. So thank you for the prayers for that. Please remember everyone on our extended uh, prayer list, uh, which is printed in the bulletin. Again, for sympathy, we wish to extend our sympathy to James C. and his family on the recent loss of his sister. Please keep the family in your prayers. We wish to extend our sympathy to the family of Jim Bates, who passed away on March 10th. His service was held yesterday here at the building. Mary Lou Danes is requesting prayers for her family on the loss of her aunt last Thursday. Another announcement is we have a bungo night, a bungo night that's coming up. Uh, so please join us in our fellowship uh, for fellowship fun and prizes on Friday, March 24th, starting at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Please RSVP uh, with Galen or Nicole Williams. We'll have a ladies' night uh, activity. Um, Creta Bales is hosting the, uh, the craft activity in her home on Friday, March 31st at 6 p.m. The cost is $5 per person. So please sign up uh, on the ladies' board and pay Creta by March 20th. Men's breakfast uh, will be on April 1st at 8.30 in the Fellowship Hall, and then there will be a grounds cleanup following. So please bring your weed eaters and your work clothes. And of course, the Cherokee Home for our Children Drive is still ongoing, and we're collecting the following items at the Cherokee Home for Children through April 30th. Pop-tarts, cereal, paper plates, paper towels, and toilet tissue. The items can be placed in a foyer under the sign. Our guest speaker tonight, uh, again, is Jesse Stewart. Jesse is 33, and he's a second year student at the Southwest School of Bible Studies in Austin, Texas. He is married uh, to Holly Stewart, and they have three kids together. So we absolutely appreciate uh, Brother Stewart coming on over here and uh, uh, preaching and edifying us. So, those who are serving, our first prayer tonight will be. Uh, Brother Zach Petty's. Our song leader is Brother Reggie Bass. Scripture reading, Brother Michael Rogers, if he's here. Okay, uh, our scripture reading will be Johnny Griffith. Uh, of course, the sermon will be Jesse Stewart. Uh, if anybody did not get communion this morning, we'll hold the uh, communion and offering. Uh, Brother uh, Andre Fredaway and Brother Dean will uh, host that. And then closing prayer. Uh, Brother Rummel is not here. So, brother, uh, so closing prayer will also be uh, Brother Zach Petty's. Are there any other announcements before we get started? Okay. Brothers and sisters, so uh, before I, I start a prayer, we need to motivate our brothers and sisters to come this evening. The tennis is lacking, and we really need to work on them to get them engaged to come here. This is their obligation and their duty to be here, the same as us. We could have been easily staying at home, but we are scheduled to be here this evening. That's our duty. So we got some work to do. Uh, looking at the attendance, this is unacceptable unto God. So let us do diligence and try to encourage them to come here this evening. 
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are truly thankful again that we have assembled ourselves together this evening to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, Father, that we have ready ourselves and we are eager to hear that word. But we pray, Father, for those that are in lack of attendance, Father, that we show our love toward you by assisting those that need encouragement. We pray, Father, for those that are, have neglected to come here. And we pray, Father, that their minds be pricked to come here and show their obligation and their love and their obedience to be in attendance. We pray, Father, for those that are sick among the congregation. We pray, Father, for those that may be traveling. And we pray, Father, for those that have lost loved ones as they're going through the agreement at this time. We pray, Father, for this congregation. We pray, Father, for the work. We pray, Father, for each individual and collectively that we continue to work together in unity. And we pray, Father, that you help us as we focus upon this year and focus on events, focus on Bible study, focus on a teaching and all the things that deals with worship and our responsibility. We pray, Father, for Brother Jesse as he come forward and bring forth the lesson this evening. We pray, Father, you guide him and direct him in the lesson that he has prepared and that it comes to a ready recollection of the things that he has studied and the preparation and he put toward it. We pray, Father, as members that we listen typically to the things that he said and apply these teachings to our life that we be better Christian in time past. We ask, Father, that we continue to do all things decently and in order and that everything that we do, Father, is in guideline is how we should worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you again, Father, for this opportunity, and we pray, Father, that you're well pleased in the way that we conduct ourselves and our actions. And we ask this prayer in thy son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Three hundred four, three oh four. There's a beautiful place called heaven. It is here above the bright blue. Where the skies are blue, in eternity through. Above the beautiful blue. Jesus is on our side, beautiful city of love. This land the sweet rest awaits us. Someday break on our view. Is promised by Christ the Redeemer. To his father, faithful and true. Up to the beautiful thing. Jesus is waiting for me and for you. And we bring our from our side. Beautiful city of life. We know that when he shall call us. Whether soon the glad coming shall be, but we know when we pass over the, the glory of Jesus will see above the blue, the beautiful blue. Jesus is waiting for me and for me. Heaven is on my side. Beautiful city of love. 
Good evening. Tonight's scripture reading will be Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revel revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. One thirty nine, one hundred thirty nine. Master, the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high, the sky is overshadowed with blackness, no shelter or help is nigh. Carest thou not that we perish? How can thou lie asleep? When his foam is so madly is raging, a grave in the angry. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Be still, be still. When storms of the sea or demons are in the wind, no water can swallow the ship where I the man. They all can sweetly obey thy will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all can sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace be still. Master, with anguish of feeling, I bow in my grief today. The depth of my sad heart will awaken and say my friend. For it's a sin of anguish, sweep on my thinking soul. And I perish, I perish, dear master, all oh, hasten and take control. The wind and the wind shall obey thy will. He is here, he is here. Whether the sea or demons are in the whole no water can swallow the sick when I from my sin. They all shall sweep me, no they can die with me. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, 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 peace. Master, the terror is over. The animal is safely back. First time in the public is bigger. And then it's within my rest. Think of the best. Redeemer, leave me alone. And with joy I shall make the first home and rest on that beautiful shore. No winter for they shall be Whether the storms on the sea or demons on the no water can swallow the ship where lies the message. They all just need me obey my will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all just need me obey thy will. Peace, peace, be still. For invitation, please mark number 161, 161.
Good evening. So great to be here again with y'all this evening. I uh, thank y'all all so much for all the hospitality shown to me and for the elders taking me out to lunch and just getting to spend the day with y'all. Lord willing, maybe I'll get to come visit y'all again in the future. The title for my lesson is, Are You Awake? Now, most of us as a child, we can remember back to a time when our parents coming into the room and waking us up, maybe shaking your legs saying, son, daughter, it's time to get up. It's time to, to get dressed and time to go to work or time to go to school. I, I can remember as a, as a young boy, uh, I grew up on a ranch down in South Texas, and uh, my dad would wake me up super early in the morning before the rooster would crow, and he'd come in there and shake my leg and say, son, it's time to wake up, it's time to get dressed, and it's time to go to work. Down in South Texas, everything either bites you, pokes you, or stings you. Everything's got thorns or teeth or something. And it's rough out there working on the ranch. Uh, I'd be out there working cattle. Uh, we had a bunch of hands that worked for us. And I'd work cattle and stretch pants. And it was a rough life growing up as a, as a young boy. But in the, we, I'd work sun up to sundown. And you, you get home and go to bed, you'd be exhausted, tired. And, Dad, waking you up the next morning. Son, it's time to get up. It's time to go to work and go get dressed. And I remember he'd walk out of the room and I'd sneak back in bed and go to sleep. And he'd come back in there, boy, I'm going to whip you. You don't get up this time. And that was some motivation that I need to get up. I need to get dressed and I need to go to work. But come Saturday, you know, whenever it was time to, my dad was going to take me fishing down at the coast. Man, I'd hear his alarm go off. Uh, he'd be coming in to wake me up and I'm walking out the door. I'm running out the door, ready to go fishing. But, you know, a lot of kids, they don't like to go to work. They don't like to wake up early and go to work, but they sure do like to wake up early and go play. But I want you to think about our spiritual life. You know, a lot of times we can be spiritually asleep. And what they may look like is, you know, the moment it's time to wake up and it's time to go to worship on Sunday morning, and we just want to hit that snooze alarm. You know, we're not too excited to wake up maybe to go be with our church family. Those could be signs of spiritually falling asleep. How about spreading the good news? You know, we're, maybe we're real excited when it comes to talking about that movie we watched. We're talking about that TV show we saw. Maybe it's a book we read, but we'll speak about anything under the sun other than the book. And that is the sign that we're spiritually falling asleep. Perhaps it's not showing up on Sunday night, coming to Sunday evening. We're not so excited to come to Sunday evening. These could all be signs of us spiritually falling asleep. Brethren, we're not going to accidentally end up in heaven. It's not going to happen that way. It's like most of you spend most of your life working a job. Retirement is not accidentally going to happen. You earned it. You know, you spend all those years working, waking up early, getting the kids ready to go to school, uh, go to your job, work eight to five, sometimes longer hours, get back, pick up the kids, make dinner, uh, help them with their homework, help them with Bible study, get them ready for bed. And you do it in and day in and day out. And the time it comes when you, you can finally retire, you earned every moment of it. You think about our spiritual walk. We're not going to accidentally end up in heaven. We are going to have to work for it, and we will spend the rest of our lives working for it. You look at, at the scripture reading we said in Romans, uh, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11, where Paul says, it is time to wake up. Now, Paul uses examples of of sleeping and waking up in three different ways. He does it physically, spiritually, and those that are actually passed away from this life. And in this case, it is, they are spiritually asleep. And I want to look at three points in this text. So please turn with me to Romans chapter 13. We are going to see first that Paul tells them it's time to wake up in verse 11. In verse 12, we're going to see Paul tells them it's time to get dressed. And in verse 13 and 14, it is time to go to work. And as Christians, we need to know that it is time to wake up spiritually. It is time to get dressed by putting on our spiritual armor, and it is time to go to work laboring for the Lord. So point number one, it is time to wake up at verse 11. For Paul says, and knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of thy sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we first believed. Well, he says that knowing the time, it is high time to wake out of thy sleep. What a time is he talking about? Well, this is back like I talked about in Bible class this, Roman, this morning on Romans chapter 12. He's talking about everything. This is the summary. In chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, the thesis of the whole book, where Paul says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. Paul saying it is no longer a, a system of uh, works and the old law, but it is a system of faith. That is what the gospel is. 
Chapter two, he talks about God's righteous judgment. Chapter three, he tells them the problem for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Chapter four, he says the Christian is justified by faith. And we are given an example of Abraham, how he was considered righteous before God, before circumcision. Chapter five, the Christian is dead to God's wrath. Chapter six, the Christian is dead to sin. And we see in that chapter where we are dead to sin. We are buried with Christ in the water of baptism. And once we rise out of those waters, we are to walk in newness of life and be servants of righteousness. And then chapter seven, we're dead to the old law. Chapter eight, we're dead to condemnation. Chapter nine through 11, we see God's mercy and long suffering as the Jews and Gentiles have been brought into that common salvation, how the Gentiles have been added to the tree, but the Jews are the natural branches. And then you get to the application side, and we went over this morning. Chapter 12, 1 and 2, the Christian's attitude we are to have toward God. Verse 3 through 13, the Christian attitude we have toward the church. 14 through 21, the attitude that we are to have towards the rest of the world. And then you get into chapter 13, 1 through 7, the attitude we are to have towards government. Uh, chapter uh, verses 8 through 10, our attitude that we are to have towards the law of Christ. But verse 11, now, knowing the time, now is high time to awake out of thy sleep. Paul is saying, we need to wake up. You see, the, the Christians at Rome, they were falling back into the old ways, going back to the old law and the works of it, and they were spiritually falling asleep. They were going back. You had Judaizer teachers coming in, talking about circumcision, talking about how doing the Sabbath, how, talking about how to they needed to go back to fasting and all these different things. And Paul is saying, you need to wake up, and you need to wake up now. Paul says it like this in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 34. He says, it is time to awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And in that chapter, you have uh, the resurrection chapter, as we know it. And Paul is telling them, uh, because there's Judaizer teachers coming in, they're teaching all these different false things about the resurrection. And Paul's saying, you need to wake up now. You don't need to listen to them. Wake to righteousness and sin not, for some not have the... Uh, the knowledge of God, and you think about all of our false teachers in the world that are teaching things contrary to this, shame on them because they do not have the knowledge of God, and he speaks this to their shame. You think about our, our brethren that will come in, and they sit in the pews, but they're just coming to worship. It's like they're just clicking in to go to work. They're just checking in for work, but they're not getting involved with the congregation. They're not getting involved in the activities. Perhaps they're not even coming to Sunday night. These are signs of, of spiritually falling asleep, and most of us have probably been there at some time in our Christian walk. I know I have. I can remember a time where it wasn't important for me to be here Sunday evening. It wasn't important for me to be here Wednesday, and I felt it wasn't important to sometimes be here Sunday morning. But thanks be to God, I had a brother in Christ that reached out to me, and he helped encourage me, helped study with me. He invited me to his house for dinner. He always had me around his family, going and doing activities. And brethren, that is part of the work of the church. We have to get involved in our Christian family's life. Like I said in Luke 8, 21, where Jesus put the importance on the Christian family over the physically physical family, where he says, my brothers and sisters, my mother, are those that hear the word of God and do it. We need to be a part of each and every one of our lives. But there at the end also of uh, Corinthians 13, 11, Paul says, knowing our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Literally every day that passes by, we are literally that much closer to the day of salvation. Closer, to, We are closer today than we were yesterday, and tomorrow is the first day of the rest of our lives. But the problem about tomorrow is it is not promised to any one of us. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, and Peter says this in 2 Peter 3, 10, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Well, when do thieves attack? It is when we least expect it. And that is how Jesus is going to return, and we need to live every day like he's returning tonight. Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Every day that goes by, we are that much closer to the day being the day that Jesus returns. Brother McGarvey, he wrote in this book this. He said, each day that goes by takes us the forever opportunity of service and brings us that much closer to the day of accounting. Is a power incentive that we need to go to work, a power incentive of action. You've probably heard it said, don't put off the things till tomorrow because tomorrow never gets here. And you think about people say, I'll do it tomorrow. What do they say tomorrow? I'll do it tomorrow, and I'll do it tomorrow, and tomorrow never gets here. 
One of my instructors said like this, do not put off today what you should have done yesterday. I'm working on my studies a couple of weeks ago, uh, working on some sermons for, for one of my classes. And my daughter walks in and she goes, dad, we didn't do our nightly Bible study tonight. We've been studying through the book of Genesis as a family. And it was like taking a dagger and sticking it right in my gut because I know that I should have been doing that. So I had to shut it down and go in there and do our family Bible study. There's going to come times in your life where you know you should do something and rather don't put it off to the park because tomorrow is not promised. When we think of things that we need to be doing, maybe it's studying God's word. Maybe it's uh, speaking to our family or friend that we know that we should be talking to about the gospel. Maybe it's encouraging, edifying. Maybe it's reaching out to those that aren't here tonight. We need to do it and we need to do it now because none of us are promised tomorrow in this room. Don't put it off. But once we wake up, it's just like in the morning when you wake up, what do you do next? You get dressed. Paul says in verse 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. He says, knowing the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Brethren, yesterday it is done. with. The things we did yesterday, the things we did last night, they are done, they're spent. We cannot go back and change it. But the thing that we can do is we can work on right now and we can work on the future. And uh, we need to work on right now because it is a new day. Let us as Christians make the most of it. Don't waste God's precious time. Literally every moment we have in this life is precious time that God has given us. And as Christians, we need to always redeem the time. We learn that as parents and grandparents. You know, you, you, you have long days. You wake up in the morning early before the roosters crow. You get the children ready for school. You take them, you drop them off. You work all day. You get home. You, you make them dinner, help them with their studies, get them ready for bed, and you do it all over again. And there's not a lot of extra free time. But what free time we do have, we need to use it wisely. Use it to study God's word. Use it to teach it to your children, to your grandchildren. Use it to help encourage others to reach out to those that aren't here tonight. Look with me real quick at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13 and verse 32. Mark 13, 32. But of the day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye not know when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man that takes a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man that worketh, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto you all, watch. Jesus says, watch and pray. You ever heard when you probably you that work in the workforce, whenever the mice or whenever the, the cats away, the mice come out and play. That is not a way that we live our Christian life. We need to remember as Christians that the, the eyes of the Lord are upon us every day. He sees everything we do and we need to always be ready. We need to always be praying to God and we need to be watching. That is be spiritually awake, always expecting him to come. Back to the chapter 13 of Romans. There at the end of verse 12. He says, let us cast off the works of darkness. Now you think about the things that happen in darkness. And Paul will list some of these in verse 13. Drunkenness, uh, people going out uh, doing gambling, whoredom, murdering, stealing. All these wicked things that are done late in the hours of night. People are just, you may say, drinking, eating, and being merry. The people that do these things, what are they not worried about? None of them are worried about tomorrow. In fact, a lot of them are going to wake up hungover. A lot of them are going to wake up broke without money. A lot of them are going to wake up with diseases. And even worse, a lot of them will never wake up again. Brother, we don't want to ever do that. As Paul says next, it is time as Christians to put on the armor of light. It is time to get dressed. However, this is the Christian armor. This is that same armor that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, where we see the breastplate of righteousness, the feet shod with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Brethren, we have to get into God's word until God's word gets into us. When Paul says, put on the helmet of salvation, he wasn't saying doing this. When he said the shield of faith, he wasn't talking about this or the sword actually going and hurting people with it. But he is saying we need to get into God's word. If you ever go and read that context, the emphasis is so that we remain standing. 
Because when the, you can say like this, when the devil's attacking, that we remain standing once the dust has settled. The only way that is going to happen is if we have God's word in our hearts and we can meditate on it when we're faced, when the devil's throwing those fiery darts. We can get through any trial and temptation in life with God's word, with God's help. But we have to get into the word of God. We can't go home tonight and lay our Bible on the shelf. Pick it up next Sunday morning. You know, some people, we may set it on the shelf and then come next Sunday morning and it's like, let's get the dust off of it and we're going to use it today in, in worship. we got to use the word of God and make application in our life and continue to grow in knowledge. It's going to be something that we will work for the rest of our life. Going. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5.5, 5, we are children of light and children of the day. We are not of night nor of darkness. And we need to act like that. We can only walk as children of light if we are getting into God's word and we are walking after the spirit. Like the psalmist says in Psalm 19, 105, thy word is a light unto thy path, a lamp unto my feet. God's word is what lights our path. We saw this morning in Bible class, Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. It is through the word of God, but we can only do those things. We can only know those things. Know God's word. And once we wake up, and once we get dressed, it's just like you do every day. It is time to go to work, as Paul says there now, in verses 13 and 14. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and in drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. It's time to walk honestly. Put off those things that are done in the late hours of night, the drunkenness, the wantonness, the strife, the envying, whatever it is. Get those out of your life. Take out the garbage. And it is time to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you may ask, well, how do you do that? Well, Paul hit on that subject back in Romans chapter 6, where he says, we are baptized with Christ in the water of baptism. Where we are to rise out of that water of baptism. We are to bury that old man, leaving him in the water, and we are to walk in newness of life. We are to become servants of righteousness. Paul is talking to Christians. The only way that you can continue to put on the word Jesus Christ is by continuing to get into his word. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, verse 14, and dwelt among us. Jesus was the word, and the way that we continue is by getting word, God's word into us, so like we see in Romans 12, 2, so that God's word can continue to transform us. As Romans 6, 23, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we ever want eternal life, if we ever want that to go to our spiritual place in heaven, you know, that retirement, we have to put on God's word and do it continually. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of work. But also remember Paul's audience here in Romans 1, 7, he's talking to the saints at Rome. How do you become a saint? You were baptized into Christ. He is talking to Christians. But the problem with the Christians at Rome is they were they were falling for the Judaizer teachers. They're bad, going back to the old law, going back to the works, the circumcision, the Sabbath, everything that the old law had. And Paul is saying, no, stop it. We're under a much newer, a much better one. It is the law of Christ. And it is a system of faith. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of study, a lot of self-discipline. Many of us learn that because we will spend the rest of our lives growing in our faith and if you've ever met somebody that says that they're they they know it all or whatever they are wrong and they need to take a look in the mirror because I've, I've known preachers that preach 50 60 years and they are still growing in their faith even listen to younger preachers and we should all continue to grow in our faith but it's going to take a lot of work on each one of us individually as he says next there it's time to make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now, provision, it is a forethought. It is a provident care of supply. You think about what, what your temptations are in life, and every one of us are tempted in some way, and we all have different temptations. What tempts me may not tempt you, and what tempts you may not tempt me, but we all have temptations. Let's say it's drinking alcohol. Well, if you come out of that water baptism, and your temptation is alcohol, and you go back hanging out with those same drinking buddies, you go back to those same places that served alcohol you used to drink with your buddies, and you keep that old whiskey bottle in the cabinet, you're making provisions for the flesh that is going to cause you to eventually lust after that can cause sin, which leads to eternal death. 
make no provisions for the flesh. Many of us, we've, we've seen people who've struggled with, maybe it's drinking, maybe it's drugs, maybe it's uh, tobacco. All of these things are, that's why they say people get addicted. They're hard to quit. It is not easy. But the only way we can do it, and I, I was studying with a guy a while back. He was, he's struggling. He just become a Christian, struggling with tobacco. And I told him, I know it's easier said than done, but the only way you can do it is you have to quit cold turkey. He was trying vaping. He was trying the nicotine gum and all of those things are making provisions for the flesh because what are you doing? Your body is still craving, still wanting that nicotine and you're still feeding it. You have to walk away from it, throw it away, and you have to let God help you by following the spirit. Galatians 5, 16, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We have to get into the word of God and let God help us through these times. Brother Roper says this in his commentary on Romans. He says, ask yourself, what are your spiritual weaknesses? He says, you need to know them because the devil knows them. And once you ask, answer that, then ask what people, what places, what activities, what situations mostly encourage me to these temptations. And once you answer those, stay away from those people, those places, those activities and those situations and make no provision for the flesh. Do not set yourself up for failure. When we come out of that water of baptism, it is time to take out the garbage, to take out the trash. And the rest of us that have, have that watch people come out of those waters, we need to help encourage. We need to help edify, help build them up. Remember, when somebody comes out of that water of baptism, everything they've known before that is of the world. And it is our job, our duties as Christians to help bring them to the flock. And to help keep them from the world. The only way we're going to do that is if we get them to be a part of our family. Because after all, they are now our spiritual family. And we are responsible. And we have a duty to do and help them in their spiritual walk. But we have to also take out the garbage in our lives. And if you still have anything that can cause you to lust. Anything that cause you temptations. Get it out of your life. and Get it out now. Take out the trash. Paul, he is telling the church at Rome, and he is telling us today that we need to spiritually wake up before it's too late. The Christians at Rome, they're going back to the old law, going back to the works of it, and Paul is saying we are dead to that. We are under now a much better system, and it is the law of Christ. It is the same law that we are under today. But being under his law, after we put on Christ in baptism, we still have to continue putting on Jesus Christ, and it is by getting into his word and letting God's word transform us each and every day. The only way we're going to do that is we're actually studying the word of God for ourselves. Brethren, None of us in this room are promised tomorrow, and our salvation is nearer right now than it has ever been in our lives. We have saw that it is time to wake up. We have saw that it is time to get dressed, and we've seen it is time to go to work. So my question for you tonight is, are you spiritually sleeping? And if you are, please come forward after we sing the invitation song so that we can pray for you as a church family because we all want to see you go to heaven. Maybe you are not yet a Christian and maybe you know you don't have that hope of salvation. You want that. Hey. If you don't believe or if you don't be baptized, you shall not be saved. You have to have hope. And then finally, the revelation of the end. We can receive our final life in the main faith of the church. That is, we must go and look and never do the Lord. And we do what we must continue to put on God's word to save in our lives. We need to help reach out to all of our church family, those that are here tonight, and encourage and edify, build them up, being part of this family, not just reaching out to them, but invite them to our family. And we go to the place of every one of us. If you have anything that you need to care for, please take your foot on. We want you to walk out of the door, you can take your foot on this one. Be in Oh, do not drag the door at all. And hope is not a 
Our communion song is number 144, 144. Let's sing first two verses of 144. More love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I make. Is anyone here that did not get a communion set and you need to take communion? Please raise your hands so that we may serve you at this time. Is there anyone else? We've come to a part of our service, which is communion or the Lord's Supper. You find references in Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 29, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 17 through 21, and 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. At this time, let's prepare to pray for and take the bread. Let's bow. Father in heaven, 
as we take this bread, we can see and imagine the abuse Christ went through for us. Each first day of the week as we take this bread, which signifies his body, let us always be thankful that he took it in our place when we should be beaten. And we ask this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Take the bread at this time. At this time, let us pray for the cup of the New Testament. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, which is the most powerful force in existence. We thank you for it cleansing our sins upon repentance. And thank you for the blood which purchased his church, the Church of Christ. And we ask that each first day of the week, as we take of the cup of the New Testament, the fruit of the vine, it signifies his blood, that we'll remember the power we have in the blood each day of our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take the cup at this time. At this time, as separate and apart from the communion, we are given an opportunity to lay by in store as God has prospered us. Would you all bow with me, please? Thanking you for all that you have blessed us with, Father. The love is so boundless that you gave up all, including your son. Give it us to point it. There is a box in the foyer on the table that uh, where you place your donation. Please turn number 33. Our closing song is 33. We'll sing uh, the first verse of this song and, the, and then be dismissed in prayer. If you're visiting with us tonight, we thank you for coming and we hope that you can uh, come again. Let's all be standing. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God Before we close in prayer, I want to thank uh, Brother Jesse Stewart for Three excellent lessons today. He, he, did, he did a outstanding job. Um, he had mentioned he has never been in clean before, but preaching like that, Brother Stewart, he may be back, be back here with us. And um, I do wish you Godspeed, you and your family, as you start out on your preaching uh, career. So let us close in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this time you have given us to come together and, and worship thee this hour. We're grateful, Father, for your love. We're grateful, Father, for the giving of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're thankful, Father, for the example that Jesus left for us. Help us focus on the example that he has set on how to, to reach the lost the example that he left us on how to love one another, the example that he has set, Father, to have the right attitude on the things concerning your will and your way. Father, we are mindful always and continually we pray, Father, for those of our number who are continually sick. 
And we ask always, Father, for healing. And we pray, Father, at this time for those who have lost loved ones. We're mindful of the C family, the base family, and others, Father. And we pray, Father, that you may draw close to them, strengthen them during this difficult time of life. Father, we pray as well that we take heed to the things that Jesse has mentioned to us tonight. We pray, Father, that we wake up. We pray, Father, that we recommit ourselves, Father, to serving your will. We pray, Father, that things in our life that are preventing us from being the best Christian that we can, we pray, Father, with your help, we ask that you help us to remove them. Thank you, Father, for, for your word. Help us to grow in love for your word, because therein, Father, is many things that can give us the guidance in our lives. Now, Father, as we prepare to depart, we ask that your never-ending grace and love and blessings continue to abide with us. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.